Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 92 of Piv's NXT Point of View Podcast. My name is Bill Pivots. So this week's episode, we have the final rematch between Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe for the NXT Championship inside a steel cage. And we also have the four qualifying matches for the number one contender Fatal 4-Way that ends up taking place next week. So there was a lot to get into. Let's get started. The championship match was billed as the final encounter, and it began like TakeOver Toronto, like a pseudo MMA fight. There were some takedowns and clinches, that kind of stuff. Samoa Joe had Nakamura pinned between the ropes, and then he ran right into him, smashing him between the cage. Nakamura fought back, um, and then he took over in, at the uh, commercial break with an insiguri and some knees to the head. They went back and forth with some strikes. Nakamura escaped the coquina clutch and then landed a running knee to the head. They were fighting on the top rope. Um, Joe went for almost a super muscle buster, but Nakamura countered, and he landed a sunset powerbomb. Nakamura then went to the top rope and connected with the Kinshasa, but he couldn't capitalize. Uh, Very innovative. I liked it. It's the first time we've seen that in this feud, so they kind of kept it fresh. He then went to leave the uh, ring through the uh, door, but he turned around, slammed the door, and hit a second Kinshasa. Joe got up again, and Nakamura put him down with a third one to retain the title. Decent match. I liked it better than the match they had they had in Japan, but I still feel like the quality of matches have gone down since TakeOver Brooklyn. Um, it's hard to keep things exciting like this for this long. They've been feuding since about August when they first met in Brooklyn. So trying to keep things new, keep the feud fresh, It's this is the fourth time we've seen these two fight, so it's definitely difficult on them. They made it last this long. Now, it's definitely time for Nakamura to go on to someone else, which I'll go over when I go over when I uh, recap the four singles matches. As for Samoa Joe, I think it's time for him to debut on the main roster, whether it's at, in the Royal Rumble or the night after on Raw or SmackDown. Um, I think it's time. Both rosters definitely need a big heel like him. The main roster needs Samoa Joe, and he's done, I've said it before, but he's done everything that he can do in the NXT division. We got a recap of the six-woman tag match from Toronto. Billy and Peyton Royce forced Derry into the ring and received an eclipse from Ember Moon. Uh, like I said, when I recapped the the TakeOver show in Toronto, I didn't watch the week after. I kind of read the spoilers, so I didn't see any of this match. This was news to me. Uh, Royce and Billy Kay were interviewed about their plans to run the NXT Women's Division. As they were talking, Daria walked in. She said that she wants to hurt one of them, and she let them figure it out. Later in the show, they announced that I believe it was Billy Kay who will be facing Daria Baronado next week. So the first of the four matches for the Fatal 4-Way was Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young. Ty landed 10 punches and stomps, I think. The whole crowd was chanting 10, so I really couldn't keep track. Dillinger set up for the tiebreaker, but Nikki Cross jumped him, uh, jumped on his back and caused a DQ. Young took her off and landed a clothesline on Eric... Uh, on Eric Young, he can't clothesline himself. On Ty Dillinger. Dillinger fought off both um, Wolf, Young, and Nikki Cross, but Damo attacked him from behind, passed Sanity on his way up the ramp, kind of smirked, and then walked to the back. I guess Eric Young doesn't really care about the loss. He's more worried about hurting people. It's so whatever. I didn't see him in that match anyway. He's not there yet as far as a build. And with the whole story around Ty Dillinger not getting the job done, it made sense for him to get the win. So, one for one so far. Second of the four matches, No Way Jose versus Andrade Cien Amis. Jose had the upper hand. He spun Amos over his shoulders and then hit a leg drop. Amos took control after a nice kick to the head. Jose landed a weird hip toss into a neck breaker. He then connected with a right hand and midair, but he got a near fall out of that. Amos broke out of the TKO, hit a big boot, and then a uh, modified DDT to get the win. Wasn't the most exciting match of the four, uh, but I did say last week that if Ty Dillinger did uh, win his match, that Amos would win. Those were the two swing matches. It could have gone either way, depending on how they wanted to book it. But with Ty being the babyface, he won. Amos offset that by being the heel. Um, and if Amos is going to be any, anything in NXT, I think he needed to win this one. No way Jose is kind of a mid-tier. Uh, Amos was brought in with a lot of fanfare. Hasn't gone right so far, but I think as a heel, it's going to work out. And winning this match and taking a little bit seriously as a contender uh, is a step in the right direction. Fourth match of the night, third in the uh, four singles matches, Roderick Strong versus Elias Sampson. Before the match, uh, Samson played his guitar worse than anyone could play it, even for someone without hands. It was just out of tune. He was singing. It was horrible. Ugh, God. Uh, after some back and forth, Samson stomped a mud hole on Strong in the corner. Uh, Roderick Strong fought out with a uh, cross face and connected with a nice drop kick off the ropes. He made his little comeback and then won with a running boot to the head. Another quick match. Really nothing to sink your teeth into here. I am 3 for 3. Granted, it does help when I make two sets of predictions and... 
I don't. Have, I have a backup plan just in case one match goes awry. So that led us to the main event: Bobby Roode versus uh, Oni Lorcan. It's been a while since I heard Roode's song. It's been a while since he's been on NXT, which is why I used it for the opening of the podcast this episode. I think his entrance lasted longer than some of the matches, to be honest. Uh, Rude landed a uh, takedown, uh, a waistlock takedown, and he slapped Lorcan uh, across the head a couple times. After taunting, though, uh, Oni caught him with a uh, couple uppercuts. Uh, Oni had Rude on the top rope, but Bobby fought back and began an uh, aggressive streak here. Lorcan landed some more uppercuts and a nice flippy neck breaker. Kind of missed it a little bit. Rude kind of escaped his clutches when he went down, but he did get a near fall. Rude cut him off the ropes with a spine buster and the impeller DDT to seal the deal and move on to the four way. At the end of the match, Rude's mouth was bleeding a little bit, and I think it was probably from the uppercuts that he took from Lorkin. There was maybe a 15 or 20 that he took throughout the match. Uh, this was the best match of the four qualifiers. Lorkin got a couple near falls. I knew he wasn't going to win, but it made for an entertaining night nonetheless. It was easy to predict the four winners of the matches, though. Um, they really didn't set up any intriguing matchups. Probably the Andrade Cien Amis and No Way Jose one was the hardest to predict. Considering they could have went either way. You knew Elias Samson was, wasn't going to win his match. You knew only Lorcan wasn't going to win his. Maybe Eric Young too. Um, but it, it doesn't make for an entertaining night when you could predict at least two, even three of the uh, of the matchups. And I still can't believe that they actually did all four matchups this week. The matches were short, like I mentioned. I think the longest one was the main event between Rude and Lorcan. They definitely could have spaced it out. Had two this week, two next week. Gave him a little bit, a little bit of more time, um, and just kind of got the crowd invested because once they started going, the match was over. So you blink, you miss it, kind of thing. Um, but they do have the four way next week, and that's going to determine the number one contender to face Shinsuke Nakamura, most likely at Takeover San Antonio. Uh, I think I read some, some of the spoilers, so I'm not going to spoil it here. Uh, but looking at the four men, you have Strong, Rude. Ty Dillinger and Andrade Cien Amis. It's pretty obvious who they're gonna, who they've been building up, who's gonna win to be the next number one contender. We also have Billy Kay versus Daria Baronado next week. Um, but as my prediction, I'm gonna go with Bobby Roode. Um, Strong and Dillinger are faces, and I don't think a face versus face championship match is something that they're gonna want for the Takeover special. Special, and Andrade Cien Amis isn't even close to deserving a title shot. So that leaves one man. Rude Nakamura, that should be a lot of fun. Uh, their entrances are probably going to take forever, though, so carve out some time. You could probably go to the bathroom in between uh, before the match starts. All right, so that was episode 92. Follow me on Twitter at BPIV underscore sports. Comment, like, subscribe on YouTube. I'm posting every Thursday, and I'll be back next week with episode 93. Peace.